I don't know, James. I equated the Hulk. I equated uh, Hulk Hogan to Michael Jordan, and the whole show has gone to hell since then. Hmm. All right, but it still yeah. beats uh, talking about the Kings losing by thirty plus points to the Dallas Mavericks. It, well, last look, night. and before we talk Facts. about them, I just because there's a bunch of NFL stuff probably get to tomorrow i don't want to get we might never get to it it's been in the notes for three days (laughs) but did you did you see uh that thing about (laughs) how the um how the 49ers got got caught i did yeah i need (laughs) stacy kaufman to do that hey you giving the money back if i already got i didn't even notice No, I wonder how how like how long it took them to get back because the money spent like, like there's nothing I can do about. It. If you if we get but, paid on Friday and you found out on Tuesday, maybe I could like give it back. But if it's months later and I didn't bought me a new this and that, sorry, yeah, no, if I can't it's give mo- it back to you. If it's months later, I'm I'm probably not thinking about it. Because <laughs> so the story for those who didn't know, John Lynch says the Niners got in that salary cap trouble. Because they accidentally overpaid one of the players by seventy five thousand dollars, and they went to the before they got caught and or had to report it and all this other stuff, they went to the player and like, hey, we gave you an extra seventy five thousand on accident. We got to get that back. And the player was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and they they were like, hey, that's what I'm gonna do. Back. Hey. Like, and they, I think and he said be. they could have like appealed or like done a bunch of stuff. He's like, just forget it. Let's move forward. We'll take the penalty and and do what we got to do. Like, yeah. yeah, by law you have to give that back. I mean, oh, shut up, James. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it is what it shut is. Up. Like, like a bank error in your favor. This is not monopoly. You do have to actually give the money back. Well, it wasn't necessarily a bank error though. It was, it was a, your accounting company. error. Yeah, yeah, your company yeah. messed up. I just thought y'all more. thought highly of me once. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I thought this was a safe way check. I thought that. <laughs> Rules, finders, keepers, losers, weepers. All I right, thought, that's what it is. I right. thought this was a bonus for me showing up at the sales meeting yesterday. <laughs> that's right. No bonus there. No. Apparently, <laughs> James gave a legendary sales meeting uh, recently because oh, they love James. many people have brought attention that James was drawing boxes <laughs> on 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 the whiteboard in the room, and that was brought to my attention today because James and I have different approaches apparently during our sales meetings. <laughs> Many they're people like, say I did well in that meeting, but I don't know what that means. They, when they agreed to it, they're probably like, "Oh yeah, sure, we'll meet with D'Lo and KC." And we saw how well went with James and, and Kyle. I'll, so nice. I wonder what D'Lo and KC will draw on the whiteboard. <laughs> it's you so guys, nice. You guys just thing. walk in with a stack of phone books and set them yeah. down really heavily on the counter. All right, let's have a talk. Yeah, it's about <laughs> how it went, James. It's about how it went. Um. All right, man. We've had our fun. Oh man. <sighs> yeah, I know. Womp, I know. Let's talk womp, about it. Here, here's here's the thing, Hammer. Yesterday sucked, and it it was it, it was bad on national television. It was a beatdown. It was it was just a tough game uh, from Sacramento. But we all knew you got two games against Dallas. If you get both, man, that would be incredible. But really, you've got to find a way to, at worst, split these two games. As bad as last night was, Hammer, nothing's changed. Friday is still in front of you. You've got to play a whole lot better than you did yesterday. But the ability to split these two games with Dallas and win the season series is still right there in front of you. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, like, look, this team has put themselves in a position where every game is basically a playoff game at this point. If they want to get in, they've got to win. And, uh, you know, there there aren't any more excuses. There are no more, you know, reasons why you you didn't hold up and, and you came out in the third quarter and just, you know, laid a complete egg. You just have to figure out ways to win. And, you know, if you if you want to be a team that makes a po- the postseason, uh, you can't you can't just float around for a second half of a game. And and hope that you don't get clobbered because NBA teams are tough and you went up against two of the best shot makers in the in the world and they burned you. One of them burned you in the first half. One of them burned you in the second half. And you got to be better next time out. You got to be better. But I, I'm sorry. I just saw this. Did you see that the Fox clip made awful announcing? 
Oh, no, yeah. but it was all over the place. Yeah, like, like I, 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 James, when you put, I did not think anything of this. <laughs> this clip really is everywhere. That's I didn't wild. think anything of this clip when, 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 I mean, when I, I didn't either, but I did, it just kept popping up. But they grabbed Matt's, you know, because mm-hmm. he had the straight, he, he, they, they, they grabbed that video and the, it, <laughs> well, okay. They wrote an article about it. Um, <laughs> You can go read that for yourself. I don't want to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess that I guess that was a big deal from De'Aaron last night. Did you think anything of it when he said that? Um, well, I'm, I knew it was a potential viral clip, but no, I didn't think anything of it because I, I know that that's how De'Aaron handles his business. And that's how De'Aaron thinks. Like there's there's nothing new in there. Like I've mm-hmm. known that for a long time. De'Aaron does not love speaking to the media until it's time for him to speak to the media for specific things. And then he's fine with it. But overall, like he knows it's part of his job. He knows that when media relations comes in and asks him to go speak to the media, that it's time for that. He, he doesn't say no, he, he comes in and he does his job and, and he understands that it's, it's not a real fun thing for him. Um, I think the only time he does have fun is when he comes out with Malik and they do like the tandem, uh, post games and then it's kind of those two just kind of go playing off each other and having a good time but like look at you get asked very similar questions like in an 82 game season 41 of them are at home it's the same group of people sitting in the same exact room the only difference is for some reason they move the chairs almost every single day so we'll always have different formations with the chairs which is weird but outside of that, it's the same exact thing again and again and again going on seven years for him. And every once in a while, we have a, a really cool moment with De'Aaron or one of the other players where they reflect on something in an interesting way. That question, um, uh, you know, again, Jason Anderson asked a question, which, you know, he, he asked it. So it's not like I'm telling secrets here, but uh I just think De'Aaron's answer was was just like forthright and like this is how he feels like he would rather not be there and and to be honest I don't blame him you know I I would much rather we just have like right after the game they bring one guy in you know seven minutes after the game and then another guy right afterwards then those guys get to go shower and leave and do whatever they're going to do the rest of the night it is kind of a long drawn out approach now and and it takes a, a long time And then again, you're asked sort of the same questions night in and night out. That question was a little bit different, but it it just seemed to strike a chord with him. Here on Awful Announcing, the headline is De'Aaron Fox denies doing post-game media is a form of leadership saying, quote, I don't get S out of that. I think no. with the but the great of, thing is there's with no the picture of him smiling next to him because <laughs> he was smiling when he said it he's like yeah. I, get, I, I thought the clip was funny i was like that, that, that's De'Aaron. like i think for us here like that's just De'Aaron. like you just said that De'Aaron yeah. is being real as he could be right now no i totally agree and, and to be honest with you i understand the sentiment like if i were him i wouldn't want to go out and talk to the media unless you're a player who's going to to be in the media when you're done playing and you need reps and you're, you're, you're actually working on something like Vince Carter would like hold fireside chats at his locker every night. And everyone just fawn over Vince, Vince Carter. Always amazing is amazing. And like, as a writer, it wasn't great. Like for television. Sure. For a video clip. There's a guy in San Francisco who does that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But the clip a bunch of words to get ready for his television appearance. (laughs) Exactly. Well, Vince would tell stories and I mean, it was, it was really fun to listen to, but if you're trying to make a quote out of it, it just was like totally unquotable. He he had at least like 300 extra words in a sentence and you're like, I don't know what to do with this. (laughs) So I get like, I get that he doesn't love it. And he doesn't love the process. And I also get that he thinks it doesn't matter to his teammates or anything else. That's never been my point. My point is that you don't have to be accountable to the guys in the locker room when it comes to who goes to the podium. You have to be accountable as a leader for what happens in the game. So there is a different a, a different set of rules here that we're talking about. There is an accountability. Somebody has to come out and talk when you lose to a Dallas Mavericks team 
by whatever the final score was, 32 points or what I don't know what it was, 36. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. So somebody has to come out because that's part of the game. It's part of taking ownership of what happened. But as far as what goes on in the locker room and, and whether he likes it or not, hey, I, I totally get it, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I've said it before, and I'm I just I'm going to continue to say it, and it's no knock on anybody. I just don't understand why they – all these professional athletes in all sports have such a problem with going to the podium. Like, it's like pulling teeth. And I understand – same questions or whatever, but just give the same answers. Like you're you're not up there that long. You you can say the same can response if you want to, uh, all the time, and then you move on. And I, I just I've never understood that aspect of why um, they get so annoyed with doing it. And it's clearly not just Fox. Like you ask most of these athletes, and they're like, it's the worst part of the job. It's like, all right, I guess. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just don't understand it. Yeah. And I mean, like when you're asking questions, it like as someone who has asked these questions a bajillion times at this point, um, you're trying to get like a player to open up and give you something, some good content. Right. And De'Aaron inadvertently gave good content last night, but he's also had moments where he just opens up and he's phenomenal. And when that happens, it's like, it's really difficult because there are like two or three people in the room that I think see it happening and are like, Oh my gosh, we're getting gold. And then we kind of start chasing it. But the problem is in these settings, you have that. And then out of no one, nowhere, someone will, you know, raise their hand and, and sort of ask like a ridiculous question. that doesn't make like, you know, about very too specific about a game, something happened in the game or, about a, the other posing team and whatever it snaps a player out of whatever they were going through and how they were laying things out for you. Um, and so I, I get it like, but again, it, it is part of the job. It, it is. And James absolutely has someone in mind when he just gave that scenario. <laughs> no, I mean, there are people that do that all the time that like they, mm -hmm. they're not reading the conversation that they're, mm -hmm that they have in their head a question that they have to ask. They, they've they got to know the answer. And what they're not understanding is a player is, or a coach is starting to go down a pathway that that is really cool and rich. You know, it's something that you we can go mine that thing for a while. And then they just, like, they've got to ask their question for whatever reason that is and snaps a player or a coach out of that conversation. And, like, look, I, I think, Sort of the interesting thing about like what we do here, right? Um, when I'm on the insiders, I talk a totally different way than I do with you guys. Like we cover a lot of the same topics, but the format is different. You guys are throwing questions to me where in on the insiders, me and Kyle are going back and forth. We're taking a million different topics. And and I'm also very different when I talk on the King's Beat podcast. I'm running the show. I'm leading, you know, questions to so like if every time we got into one of these conversations and we started having like really cool, insightful stuff that's happening, whoever is, is talking, you want to let that breathe and you want to let it have space and time. And, and then you want to follow up. Like there's been times where like Kenny, we had a last week, we had something that we were talking about and you just kept coming back to me and asking more and more and more about it. That's what we're trying to get to in a press scrum most of the time. What we don't want is, you know, the the one sentence answer from Demonis Sabonis, which, you know, and that's not because Demonis doesn't say anything. It's because he he he's in and out. He doesn't like have a bunch of extra words that he likes to throw. But I mean, that's our job is to is to try to chase a story and try to pull as much out of a player as we can. And it's not the easiest setting in a in a scrum. It's not like in this podium setting that we have now. It's not easy either. It's just different. I don't know why I have in my head the clip that I think I saw for the first time. I had always heard about it, but I think I actually watched the clip for the first time like a week ago when somebody asked Kyrie about LeBron being a father figure to him. And Kyrie was <laughs> – the lady asked the question, and this is when they were in Cleveland. 
she asked the question and Kyrie was like, um, uh, no, what I, I couldn't hear what you said. What I, I'm hearing things. What'd you say? She's like, yeah, yeah. How about him being a father figure to you? And he goes, I, I don't even, um, he was so perplexed. He's like, hmm. well, I have one father and that's, hmm. he said the father's name. And he's, but yeah, LeBron is he's he's really great at being a leader in the locker room and do, he was so flustered by and that's like what James so, talks about. Like maybe he's talking about like regular stuff and somebody comes out of nowhere with this question. It's just like Well, the reporter what? probably had the idea of writing a story about how Kyrie looks up to LeBron James. Mm -hmm. So they formed that question that way in hopes of getting the answer they want for the story that they already had developing in their head. Yeah. As it turns out, the story doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, and I think that that happens all the time. Right. But I also like, again, you, you do this long enough and there's moments where there's like synchronicity with the group, right? Where it's all of a sudden we see something that's happening. And Sean will ask a follow-up and I'll follow up to his follow-up. And then Jason will ask a follow-up and we're all pulling on the same thread, mm -hmm. like unwinding this saying like crazy. And that is when you get gold and it just doesn't happen all that often, especially now. Like if you get a, a an interview in a pregame setting with like, I had the one-on-one -on -one with Keon Ellis last week, right? It's just very much like there is no flow yet. There is no, we're not around these guys nearly as much as we were in the past. So there isn't like a level of comfort that he has with everybody. And a lot of times that's not when you get the best stuff too, though. Right. It depends on the player. Like, mm. and, and also depends on the line of questioning. So that's a place where like, if I'm writing a story about, let's say about Malik Monk. Right. But I, I know that, you know, Mason Jones and him have a relationship because they're both from, uh, they well, I think Mason played at Arkansas, but they also both played for the Lakers at the same time. And and then I want to get a quote from De'Aaron Fox. That's a pregame is a really good time to go in and, and ask a very specific line of questions that are very short and with the understanding that you're plugging, plugging them into a specific piece, right? So I can go to De'Aaron, hey, I just want to ask you something really quick about Malik. And then hit him with two questions. All right, have a good game, whatever. Leave him. And then you go to the next person. That's Those are good places to formulate those those questions. Um, and and post-game, it used to be that while the scrum was in one area, if you were writing a story, you could sneak off and go get another player. But that's just not how it is anymore. There's one player in the locker room at a time for the most part. Like The post-COVID era is very different for us. So this is fun. Um talking about a viral social media clip, but what went wrong for De'Aaron in yesterday's game? Or, and this was my stance three hours ago when we were actually talking about the Kings Mavericks, I thought Dallas did a lot right that frustrated De'Aaron and perhaps frustrated Sacramento. What were your thoughts on the way the game transpired? Probably more specifically the first half. I thought the first half was pretty rocky. Obviously, everything went terrible at the beginning of the third. But they, they, the Dallas Mavericks, had a game plan that seemed to really frustrate De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis as well. Yeah, I mean, they sent Derek Jones Jr. at De'Aaron from the moment the ball was inbounds. So he was tracking him at all times, picking, up, picking him up full court, which took the ball out of Fox's hands and sort of changed the trajectory of what he was trying to do. There wasn't a lot of downhill action for, for De'Aaron. And I thought it was brilliant. And then they just kept doing it. They they used Dante Exum to do it. They uh, whatever whoever the player was, it's a defensive minded player on the court. They sent him at De'Aaron, and I think that I mean it worked for one night. That I don't believe will work again on Friday when they play again. Um, I thought it was again. It is sort of clever for like a little short stint to try to get the ball out of De'Aaron's hands. But the Kings motion offense went to hell in a handbasket and De'Aaron wasn't getting the ball in the right spots. Again, that will change. And not only that, but when De'Aaron found success early in the game, 
it was because he kept using that and getting switched on to Luca. And then Luca doesn't play any defense at all. He just tries to reach out and grab you the whole time. And so De'Aaron was abusing Luca on the high screen and uh, he just didn't hit his shots. And so like, look, I, I think this was a bad game for De'Aaron is a bad game for the Kings in general, mm -hmm. but I think that they'll look at what happened in that game and they'll be able to make some pretty substantial changes into how they handle situations like that. And then if you look at the third quarter, you know, basketball players like anyone else, when, whenever things go wrong, you regress to what you're best at and, or what you think you're best at and De'Aaron and Malik, I think both of them really regress to watching Kyrie and watching Luca and how they were dominating the ball and they turned into that player as well. And so there wasn't a lot of movement. There wasn't a lot of screens. Um, you know, they forgot about poor Keon Ellis who has seven points in like the first three minutes and doesn't get another shot attempt until late in the fourth quarter when he gets an and one, uh, they forgot about Keegan Murray for stretches and it just became very un Kings like basketball of way too many dribbles, way, way too much like me, me, me hero ball. And it, and everything fell apart completely. One of the things that I also think about with um, that game and that strategy is if they're going to defend De'Aaron like that with those type of players, you're like, okay, well, you're taking something off from the offensive end for Dallas and you didn't. Exum and Derek Jones were a combined four of seven from beyond the arc last night. And that's just, like I said, if they're being effective on the defensive end, that's one thing, but you don't expect for to get both. Right. Like, all right, we'll take a little off of our offense right now to get better on defense. Well, not only did they not take a little bit off on their offense, they shot relatively well today so, or last night. So, um, James, I just thought it was one of those things. Like I said, we could talk about, you know, being ready and, you know, letting people. Down. I don't think they necessarily let anybody do anything. I, I was shot the, the, the crap out of the ball last night. Um, 22 yeah. threes. Um, 56% from beyond the arc. Mama told me there's going to be days like this. And and it was like that last night. You combine that with the fact that the Kings didn't really shoot the ball well, which is a little bit on them and a little bit you tip your hat to Dallas mm -hmm. and you get a 30-point loss. Yeah, I thought it was interesting even the way the Kings decided to start the game with Demonis Sabonis defending uh, P.J. Um, why am I drawing a blank? Yeah, P.J. Washington. <laughs> Um, because then Dallas just kept getting him in the screen and roll. And, mm -hmm. and so both, you know, they would sort of Sabonis would go with Luca and whoever's defending Luca would try to go with him as well because he's so crafty and BJ Washington was wide open and hit three threes right away. Like right in the first quarter, boom, boom, boom. Then they made some adjustments. And next thing you know, it, it was no longer, uh, PJ setting that screen, they started using their big. So Daniel Gafford was coming up and setting the screen or, um, uh, uh, Derek lively. And, and then they tried to do screen and rolls. And so the big man's roll into the basket. Well, that's what happened in the second quarter. And none of that worked. And the King stayed in the game because they kept getting steals on Luca, making bad passes. And they were again, shocking Luca. They're running two guys at him. And, and then when he was trying to make the pass to the cutter, the Kings were just stepping in and taking the ball. So I, I think, first of all, Dallas learned from that. And when they came out in the second half, they stopped doing the screen and roll. They went specifically to all of those sets that you're talking about where they're getting the wide open looks. And I'd also point out to you, when you talk about Derek Jones Jr. and Exum, like they have to play defense like at a crazy high level. But the way that that team is designed, if De'Aaron has to play defense like that on one end, and then on the other end, he's running around like a crazy person. That's not what they're doing with Exum and with Derek Jones Jr. Those dudes are going over and hanging out in the corner, catching their breath. And when the ball gets thrown to them at, you know, three seconds left in the shot clock because Luke has dribbled all over God's creation with it and then finds them, it's not a huge expenditure of energy. They're really only expending the energy on one end of the court. So while they were effective and hit four of seven, Number one, I don't think they'd hit four or seven again because that's not who they are as players. But also, those guys are just kind of well-rested. 
all they've got to do is play on one end of the court because you have two like tremendously high usage players in Kyrie and uh, in Luca. Mm-hmm. Hammer, I thought you know we talk about the Mavericks defense, what they did to Sacramento. Sacramento missing shots. I thought particularly in the first half, the Sacramento Kings were really indecisive on the offensive end. Like there were some plays around the rim. Of course, they just they just missed a couple that. You know, if they do again today, maybe those drop. But there were some points where they made the extra pass where they probably shouldn't have made the extra pass. And it either resulted in a bad shot or a turnover. And it felt like, and I don't know if this is a credit to Dallas or just their own thinking, but they looked really, really indecisive in that first half yesterday. Yeah, I just think they had a lot running through their minds. That's what it kind of looked like. One team wasn't thinking and was just playing. And the other team was thinking about it and thinking about were how upset they were on true TV. That's what was going on at first. <laughs> there half. it is. I'm like, Wait, we're on true TV. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. And it was in your head. Wondering why it was going to double overtime with the, with the Lakers and bucks. Wondering yeah. why Doc Rivers blew another lead. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Hmm. Imagine that <laughs> oh, a 19 point lead. Hey, Anthony Davis did a hell of a job last night. Well, LeBron didn't play. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I love I love, I love how um, Doc Rivers is the first person we go to there. Oh, yeah, that's a must. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, like he was one for five his in fault. the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's his fault. I said I said to Mike, he's in 3-1 <laughs> mode right now. Sorry, James, go ahead. Maybe no. This Doc Rivers comedy hour. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the Kings just made a lot of errors. And, you know, uh, just a weird game. Plus, I, they they also like each of these games is a reminder that you're on nationally te- national television, that everything's the breaks are longer, that yeah, you know you have to yeah. slow yourself down and kind of live in the moment a little bit more, and I, I think it also plays into it too. We saw, you know, Malik try to go playoff Malik, and it wasn't a good form of playoff Malik. It was forced, and you know his three point shot is not falling at all right now. And same with De'Aaron, you know his three point shot has been hit and miss. Um, and we saw just way too much of that, almost like, Hey, the bright lights are on, uh, you know, more people are watching and it, it just did not go the way that they thought it would go. Uh, that is a good first half though. I mean, until Kyrie started, I thought it was, I thought it was a terrible first half, but I thought they're still in it. Like they're right there. Yeah. So this is, this is actually great. They didn't play well. They're right there in the game. This will be a strong third quarter. <laughs> that, that, that didn't no, happen. It did not. That game, yeah. that game ended quickly, man. Yeah, it really felt like, like, like an anvil just fell from the sky and right on top of the Kings. It was just like a they, Kyrie avalanche. Yeah, just one like mistake, one forced offensive play after another. And then on the other end, Kyrie, he wasn't even touching the net. Mm-mm. Like it was like, what in the world? Um, exactly. When that's what makes those two, that team so tough. When they start hitting, they're nearly impossible to stop. When, when you have Luca and you have Kyrie hitting, I don't know. I like, I, I feel like. And that was the cold piece. It wasn't even at the same time. No. It no. was like, Luca's like, I got the first half. Kyrie, you take the second. Kyrie went. Crazy. I kind of feel though that the Golden One Center has become like the Coors Field equivalent for for basketball teams. You know, like you go to Coors Field and everyone hits a home run because the air. Yeah. It seems like whatever is with the sight lines in Sacramento, they are perfect for shooters, and shooters love it. And everyone, everyone hits everything at Golden One Center. And uh, you know, I don't really remember a whole lot of teams having bad shooting nights there uh, except for the Kings. See, And that's not because this. they play there more often than everyone else. But yeah, it's, it's not the Kings fault. It's the architects. There fault. you go. Tell there Mike it is. To chill out. It's not about defense. It's about the architects. It's the lighting. That's it's about, it's about that damn open <laughs> thing that everyone <laughs> tries to, it's the, the hanger doors. that everybody tries to replicate. Uh, we'll come back. We'll talk much more about the Sacramento Kings with our insider from the insiders. Our man, James Ham here. Medilla and KC brought to you by Sky River Casino. Return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. I uh, was looking for a picture to be a smart ass because I've never seen one and didn't think it existed. And to the best of my knowledge, it in fact doesn't exist. 
but I came across a very unfortunate Reddit post from Squared Circle. Jesse, are you listening to this? Nine years ago, Mike and Mike on ESPN just called Hulk Hogan the Michael Jordan of wrestling. Oh, no. Yeah, well, Mike and Mike broke up, so that shows how much they knew. Recycled. Yeah, I'm Damian Barling here. <laughs> oh. mm, that's funny. I'll concede Hogan and Jordan if you give me Bret Hart and Harden. I'll give you that. That's pretty funny. I'll give you that. <clears throat> Man, I looked at the. I don't know, James, for some reason after that loss last night, I feel like the King's schedule looks a lot tougher than it did last week. <laughs> <laughs> up the jazz ahead i got that that nick celtics thing is stupid the nick celtics net stretch is ridiculous yeah but look at the look at the sun schedule <coughs> well it starts tonight for the suns right it's it's uh uh denver tonight yes they have 10 games left the easiest win loss percentage on their schedule is the sacramento kings they have oh a six six forty seven so if you look at Tankathon strength yep. of schedule, the Kings aren't on their schedule as one of their tough teams, and they have no this, easy teams. This is a monster. It starts with the Nuggets tonight, uh, the Thunder on Friday. This is, I, I, I'll, I'll do better, sorry. At Nuggets, at Thunder, at Pelicans. They're home versus the Cavs, home versus the Timberwolves, home versus the Pelicans. Remember those two games they have against the Pelicans. Could help the Kings out either way, especially if they win Friday. Versus the Clippers, at the Clippers. Again, remember those games against the Clippers can help the Kings either way, especially if they win on Friday. Then they'll play Sacramento, the second-to-last game of the season, on April 12th, and then close out at Minnesota. So they end with three games on the road while Sacramento finishes with three games at home. That, yeah, that is brutal. That Kings game against Boston will still be tough, but I think that's going to be one where like um the Kings will be playing like the Celtics without Drew Holiday, like mm -hmm. like they're going to be nursing like injuries and stuff like that, like resting mm -hmm. guys till they get to the playoffs. So the Kings might have a little bit of um. That's maybe, the uh, second night of the back to back. Doing. I think. I think the yeah, first night in New York, it's the national yeah. televised game, and then uh, and yeah, then they, they got to go back to New York, Boston, New York. Yeah. Stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think the Lakers are making the sixth seed either. And that Clippers um, is a road game, right? That's at the Clippers. For the Kings? Yeah, is that, or is that here? Oh, no, it's next Tuesday at home. It's here. It's here. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to go see my boy. I got to get out to that. These games, yeah, oh, Russell's back, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these games, have, uh, like every game down the wire is going to be crazy. Yeah. So... That's a good point, Amos. Mind the Celtics just to play everyone that day. Yeah, it's a good point. Even the Kings finished two games at home, right? So it's Phoenix and then Portland last game of the season. I think it's three games at home. Um, because I think the Blazers are in there. The Is Blazers Pelican, last game. Pelicans, Suns, Blazers. Oh, Jesus. Let me let me double let me let me double check to make sure I'm not. And the Pelicans and Suns are both the fifth game of the season against those teams. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. All right, real quick, someone in the chat is Matthew threw it in the chat. Is Jeff Hardy um is that AI? That's not a bad one. Jeff Hardy is Allen Iverson. That's not a bad one. Hmm. The Soul Shine Band. We have no idea what's going on with Sosh uh with Sasha. They have not given us an update at all except for to say he's questionable. But he's been questionable four consecutive games and not played. So it's kind of weird. Like it, they there were certainly strong indications. He was like pretty close. Well, he's been a full participant participant right. of practice before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they practice tomorrow. Mm hmm What time is practice? Will you get there? Probably not. Oh. Probably be at noon tomorrow. Oh, okay. 
right. Um, Drew down brings up DJ Khaled. Every time this dude smiles, it creeps me out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, The Kings just played, just so, just to answer this question, he's questionable four straight games. Hasn't he been practicing? The Kings just played five games in seven nights. There are no practice practices when you, like today, there's no practice. Anytime you have a back-to-back, you don't practice the next day. So the Kings have not practiced at all. Yeah, I mean, they might be trying to get him in, in game shape. I, I get what you're saying, but it's, there's no practice to do that. And even practices this late in the season, you're not doing full contact, real practice. That ain't happening. Everyone is taped together. <laughs> Domas is stitched up. Jesus, yeah. Even the other night, he had to have his face taped up. Like We're coming back, Hammer. All right. All right, we're back here. Well, I guess we should bring that conversation to the to the radio here, James. Um, whatever update we can have on, do we have any sort of update on Sasha? I think there was a belief his return was really, really close about a week ago, and it just seems game after game after game he's continuing to be ruled out. Um, do we have anything on Sasha at all? Yeah, we don't. Um, he hasn't even been in the locker room in pregame, so I'm used to at least like going over and talking to him in pregame. Um, I've had plenty of conversations with him this this entire season. Uh, the problem that he probably has is that the Kings like their players to go through a handful of practices to build up, and the Kings just haven't had practice. Again, we talked about this off the air, but the Kings had a back-to-back last week and then a day off uh, to travel, and then a game, and then a day off to travel again, and then uh, and then the back-to-back again. So they've, they've had five games and seven nights. The Kings will not practice in that scenario at all. You're not going to practice um, when you have three games and four nights, and then you're, you're practicing the next day, and you never practice after a back-to-back. So like today, the Kings have off. They'll practice tomorrow. Uh, for for Friday's game, but like there's just not a lot of time to get somebody in game shape. And you know, again, he's a 28 year old dude. You're not going to send him down to the G League to get him some run. Although that might be the best scenario for him to get him some oh some game action. Yeah. The the G G League just isn't used that way. And I don't know. Again, I think it's the flaw to the G League and a flaw to the thinking um, that's gone into it. Uh, but they teams don't do that, like rehab assignments in baseball. I, I think it would be like in this situation, how else is he supposed to get, you know, out there and start running? And mm-hmm. this late in the season two, teams just aren't doing a five on five go at each other practice where you're running up and down the court and you're trying to get somebody some court time. So a lot of times the younger players, they'll get together and they'll do like three on three or they'll do five on five with, um, with some of the like, uh, you know, the training crew and the uh, the uh, player development crew, you'll see a lot of that even this late in the season. Um, but like, who are we talking about at this point? Because most of the younger guys are having to play right now because you've got Herder and Lyles and and of course Sasha out. Uh, so there isn't even a lot of that going on because players, if they're gonna play in a game, they usually don't have those uh, those like secondary games. Um, cause what you don't want to do is roll an ankle in a secondary game before on like on a game day, um, or on the day before a game when you might get to actually play. So have you kind of changed your feelings maybe about seeing Sasha this year? I know when he first got hurt, it was like, ah, we probably won't see him this year. Do you, you feel maybe a little different about it now, or is it just not the time not lining up, um, to possibly see him this year? I mean, what are we down to nine games, nine or 10? Uh, and like, no. like no, he maybe. might play. Yeah, he might play. But in mm-hmm. my opinion, the reason he's going to play, if he plays right now, the reason is because Trey Lyles is out. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I was off base with my thought on that. Mm-hmm. Like, at, they're just, it's, he's been gone for so long and he wasn't a huge part of the rotation when he went out. So what exactly are you expecting from him? You know, I, I don't know. Um, so, and, and I think that also tells you something 
like there is an opportunity here. If Sasha could play, you would expect that he would because he, mm -hmm. the Kings need him because yeah. they don't have Trey. And so you would expect that if he could go, that he would, you know, go out there. But I think the Kings maybe are being a little bit cautious, but also again, we don't have a medical update. We don't have a medical update on him. Uh, we haven't got one yet on Trey Lyles. We're at the two week mark on Trey Lyles. Um, right now and that was their reevaluation point, right? That was the original the reevaluation. Yeah. Of the spring. But again, we didn't get a reevaluation point on, on, uh, Sasha either. We just heard he was at practice one day. Um, I just he was at practice. <laughs> and then, and then we also, we don't know what's going on with Kevin Herter shoulder. Yeah. I was going like, to say, we haven't even acknowledged the two guard who <laughs> they're just kind of like, well, we'll figure it out later. Well, I guess I, I, it's, it's possible that, you know, that, he's not going to do surgery. Uh, you know, I, I mean, mm -hmm. if they had a surgery surgery, they would have told us, I, I believe they would have said it was successful. Like everyone else says with these things. But, um, but at the same time, like we have, we have no idea. He's wandering around on the sidelines without a sling or anything on. And so it kind of makes you believe that mm -hmm. they're probably going to see, you know, once it heals up and it gets to where he can, it's not super painful they'll probably reassess him at that point and say, okay, are we going to, are we going to go in for surgery or not? Um, we had Dr. P on last week uh, to talk about the the types of surgery there. And um, you know, like it's not like a baseball player, which is called, I think it's slap, a slap tear, which is in the upper part of the rotator cuff or the labrum, sorry, the upper part of the, uh, the labrum. And that's from an overuse situation where, Again, the bicep tendon goes into the shoulder and, you know, throwing repeatedly baseball after baseball, you end up, you know, damaging and you can have, um, the labrum tear away from the socket. Uh, and then you have to go in and like stitch up that tear. Um, the type of labral tear that Kevin has is from like a singular event, like a, like a violent act that happened to his shoulder where it pulled his shoulder pops out of the socket and it pulled the labrum with it and tore the bottom of the labrum. So on the bottom side, not on the top side. And so those things, they don't typically heal up all the way, but it can like do a little bit of scar tissue. The question is what grade he, of, of tear he had. And then on top of that, it's whether his shoulder is unstable, like where it might pop out again. And so that's the problem with the type of tear that, that Kevin has he has the risk is that it will continuously pop out or a baseball pitcher when they go in and they clean it up, it's because it's a pain tolerance issue. So just two different types of, of, of problems. And you don't want to have repeated dislocations of the shoulder because then you can do more and more damage to the labrum. Is there anything you enjoy more than graphically describing injuries in there? <laughs> nope. like they're, they're... I love it. Oh, there's a lot going Doctor. on. Dr. James Ham here with us on, <laughs> on D'Lo and KC. Uh, well, good news, Kings fans. We're all really big Nuggets fans tonight. Oh, let's, let's root on. Okay. Let's root on Michael Malone. Our old, our old, our old buddy, uh, Michael Malone. Uh, some of us, roll the game. not all of us, <laughs> some of us, some of us might want to root for the Thunder too, just for fun. Yeah. Or, or 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 root for the root for the Rockets. I mean, because it's the Rockets and yeah, the Thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Root against Absolutely. the Thunder. I mean, uh, go Palo. <laughs> go Palo. Oh. Hmm. Keep well, pushing them down. Well, all right. Maybe out. Go Gigi, by the way. Go, yeah. <laughs> go Gigi. Go Gigi. <laughs> Memphis has got the Lakers. Um, Sneakily, they're like two back. I mean, there's a lot of tiebreakers and stuff like that, but aren't they like two back in the standings? Three in the lost column or something like that. From and Sacramento. Yeah, they that, won last night. Yeah, yeah that, they came back and won that game last ridiculous. night. After stealing the first half from Sacramento on national television. <laughs> um, by the way, Suns and Nuggets on ESPN 1320 tonight. That that reminds me. I remember game five, 2004, Kings Timberwolves. The whole first half. It was supposed to be on TNT, obviously, a doubleheader. The whole first half was on NBA TV. because. Pistons nets went like three overtimes. Mm. Chauncey hit a half quarter to tie it and stuff like this. Damn near the whole. Well, I was able to click over to NBA TV, but this is 2004. Remind you, this isn't. It's a different time. Mm. This all damn damn near the whole first half. 
flashbacks. It, it looked like that game was going to a third overtime last <laughs> night. We were watching it on a computer like this. This it was one seventeen to one seventeen for at least an hour. <laughs> That was rough. And Doc couldn't figure out how to get a get a stop. It was Doc Rivers' fault. It was Doc Rivers' fault. I mean, I wish I did no story. Dame Lillard put him up late ahead, but Doc messed it up. <laughs> I mean, look at the roster. I got Pat Beverly. I mean, you didn't, what you gonna have? I don't know. Hey, Doc, we brought Pat Beverly here for you, buddy. Uh, Ridiculous. <laughs> most important one is Michael Malone, Nikola Jokic, uh, and the stand-up Porter Jr. Uh, mm. Michael Porter Jr. Well, he's the stand-up brother. Is he? Well, maybe not in all cases, but we're rooting for him tonight. Let's go, buddy. Get a uh, problem up. Yeah. <laughs> well, James. Yeah. James. Come on, James. Oh, Hope he can parlay this into a second championship. James. Oh, no. Is he going to wow. double down? Is he going to double down on this? <laughs> James. Goodness gracious. Hey, it's all part of the you're show. Supposed, hey, you're, su- you're supposed to be the grown up in the room, James. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Um, Got to split. Got to get this one. We went over it. We were looking at the schedule during the commercial break. The Mavericks ahead for Sacramento. Obviously, the second game against the Mavericks on Friday. They got the Jazz, the Clippers, the Knicks, the Knicks and Celtics, which is a back to back. And then they go from Massachusetts back to New York. To take on the reason. Brooklyn Nets, uh, and then they close out with uh, the Thunder. I think that's a road game. And the Pelicans, Suns, uh, and Blazers. These are all massively important games. And I was feeling, I was, I was feeling pretty tough about that. And then James reminded me, "Hey, just go take a peek at Phoenix's schedule." <laughs> and man, it starts Rough. tonight. They're on the road against the Nuggets tonight. Then they got the Thunder on the road. The Pelicans on the road. The Cavs. And the good thing about these games is they've got two against the Pelicans. They got two against the Clippers. If the Kings can win some games here, like those help Sacramento no matter what. Yeah, Yeah, no matter what, those help Sacramento, given that the Clippers and Pelicans have fallen back a little bit into the conversation. So it could be be a a situation where, as, as, as weird as this might sound, if the Suns beat the Pelicans the first game, just root for them to beat them again. Like whoever wins, the, just don't root for splits in these games. Yeah. Root for whatever no, team wins the first game to go two and zero. Oh. That's that's it. That's it. That's what we've been hoping for here. Now we need we need a split. Yeah, now we need a split. Yeah, we were talking. I, I think Kenny wasn't part of this. The it's crazy if you look at Tankathon and the most difficult games left on your strength to schedule. The the Suns have nine games that are on the most difficult games. And then the 10th game is against the Kings. Like the Kings, <laughs> the Kings game doesn't even reach the point of what the rest of their schedule is. I mean, it's 647 win percentage. I didn't even know there were enough teams in the league with a 647 win percentage to have you have that as your final like strength to schedule against. They're playing with the exception of, well, because of what happened. <laughs> if the Kings had won last night, every team remaining on their schedule would be a top six team. Mm-hmm. They'd be a solidified playoff team. If they get in, they're going to they're gonna earn it. Oh, they're absolutely going to earn, earn it. But let's hope that doesn't happen. No, let's hope it doesn't. Yep. Let's hope it doesn't. Unless they win two against the Pelicans and two against the Clippers, knock them both <laughs> out, and the Suns and the Kings make it, then that's fine. Yeah. That's 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 perfectly fine. Um, any concern about Malik? You you kind of you were talking about this a little bit earlier. Uh, we saw obviously an aggressive Malik. He got a little. There was a couple of pat. There were a couple of moments in the first half where you know the 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 bad pass that kind of led to a blocking foul. You know on the on the on the on the next play. Um, he's had a string of a couple of games where the shot really hasn't gone his way. That's just Malik. That's just the, the the game. Or you you a little worried as we head down here to these final ten? No, I'm not worried. Um, Malik has had a couple of stretches like this through this season, but we talked about this last year. Like his his stretch that was bad last year was like six weeks. This year it's been like three games, and even one of those times that he had one of these these little swoons like this, he came out and apologized. You know, and, and just like this time he said, you know, I, but I, I couldn't throw a rock in the ocean or whatever it was that he said. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that first of all, just the way he's played 
how much responsibility is on him. The fact that he is playing way more minutes than he did last year, even in the second half of the season, he's playing way more minutes than he did last year. I think this is just part of his maturation, just like it is part of Fox's maturation um, to learn how to play at this level continuously for 82 games. And, you know, people want to call it an excuse, but five games in seven nights in what, like four different cities, that's like, that's ridiculous. It's not easy at all. These guys are beat up. Um, we're getting even Demonis Sabonis. You can look at his numbers over the last couple of games. They're down. And if that guy's numbers are going to be down, that should tell you how much this stretch can wear on somebody. So I, I think Malik will be fine. These two days off right here, I think are going to do wonders for the Kings. I, I think that they will come out with a bounce in their step on Friday. I hope that they come out with a bounce in their step. But we've seen this team also come out after getting thumped by a team and get thumped by the same team again, like what happened earlier in the season against Houston, what happened earlier in the season against New Orleans. And you hope that that there's some carryover from the earlier games against Dallas where they were just a much better team than Dallas, even with Kyrie and with Luca. And that for some reason, it's not that Luke, that Dallas just got way better and the Kings are regressing. So I expect a better effort. And, and I do, I do think that Malik will have a bounce back, you know, final 10 games here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this schedule and I'm trying to pull up, have the Kings uh, this year, have they, like, dominated any back-to-back, -back, like, the little two-game series or won any of the two? I don't think they have. I think they've lost Houston and they lost New Orleans. Well, those I don't think there's ones. been as many as there were in, in, in recent years. Um, they've only had two, and they haven't gone well. Although in the um, – wasn't the case in the Houston two game series, but in the New Orleans two game series, they got destroyed the first game and lost the close game the second time. Okay, buddy, you're not helping. Well, no, they're going to they, 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 <laughs> they, what, what they play well on Friday. I know that. Now, this uh, is also. Eerily, you literally just said they played well and lost. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> but this is eerily similar to the two game series the Kings had last year against Dallas. Dallas yeah. came in. Yep. Uh, it was right after yep. the trade deadline. Matter yep. of fact, and somebody on the stream looked at me and said, "They didn't need Mason Plumley, huh?" Huh. <laughs> and, then, and they got worked, and then they came back that next Saturday and handled business. Who said so, that? I don't know. That was like a Friday Saturday, right? <laughs> <laughs> was, it? Was, like was it? A, it was like a Thursday. Saturday? Saturday. It wasn't a true back to back, but it was like a Thursday Saturday, I think. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Are you sure? I think it was. Maybe so. it might have been. It might have been a Friday. Well, I could. Saturday. I could probably look. I, I, yeah. Sorry. It might have been. I thought there was a day between. While you check that too, I, I just want to mm -hmm. point out that people, again, the craziness of the last week and a half, right? So on March eighteenth, February tenth, February eleventh. Yeah. Uh, Correct. Friday and Saturday. So the Kings last Monday. So we're talking about an eight day stretch, Monday to Tuesday, right? So over the last eight days leading into like yesterday, right? They played Memphis at home in Sacramento. They flew to Toronto the next day and then played the Raptors, then flew to Washington and played the Wizards the, night, the next night. Then they had one day to fly to Orlando and they played the Magic. Then they flew home and then they played Philadelphia and Dallas on back to back. So in eight days, they played six games. One in Sacramento, one in Toronto, one in Washington, D.C., one in Orlando, and then two more in Sacramento. And that's just absolutely ridiculous. So if when you, you look at the totality of it and what they should look like on the court, man, maybe they should have a bad third quarter against a team like Dallas. I mean, that's it's an NBA scheduling anomaly that was commonplace five years ago or seven years ago. But you don't see this at all anymore where you have five games in seven nights or six games in eight nights, stuff like that. It just doesn't happen. All right. Let's get this W on uh, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 I do think there's a few. I, do, I, I know they need to hit shots. I do think there's a few adjustments they need to make. And oh, yeah. Some of it is like freeing De'Aaron up a little bit. 
Also, we had we didn't really talk like they they made life tough on Domas. Mm -hmm. uh, Domas had a very oddly inefficient night uh, on the offensive end, um, and then you know I, I know you know guys not hitting shot. All of this stuff comes into a play, man. When they say the ball have energy, boy. They mean that when it comes to Sacramento, because rarely does one guy shoot bad. Right. It's like they all, I mean, I know Malik had that night a few nights ago, but like, man, it feels like when, when it's bad, it is bad, bad. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. happened yesterday. It was bad, bad. And Luca was good, good. Michael and, Jackson bad. And then Kyrie took over. Mm. And, and they hit all of their shots around the perimeter. What was that other game this year where they had that where, um, oh, when they were playing in Phoenix. And you had Okogi and you had Nasir Little, anyone who could have possibly made a three that was like mm. jarring made every three they took. And you're like, hmm, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> buddy buddy Ham here. Yeah. <laughs> buddy. Buddy, buddy Ham. You see our man Ben Ross tagged us in the on this date. <laughs> buddy, buddy going off for Oklahoma. Buddy was cooking that day. He boy. sure was. He I was love cooking. that Buddy Healed is part of the permanent fabric of this show. I I, I get a kick out of that. Oh, he gave it uh, to Jason Anderson yesterday uh, the other day. He gave it to Jason Anderson. Well, <laughs> messing with Jason. It was good stuff. Well, I guess we'll we'll end there. <laughs> we'll end there. He said it twice. We'll we'll see. Yeah. We're the game ends on a penalty. <laughs>